What is the genesis of this project? I knew that uh, a, a space like that uh, is probably the best to create something different from what you are doing in your own studio and for me like in Toulouse. So it took me more than a year to come here okay. to do something because uh, I was busy and I didn't want to come on the rush. I didn't want... So what happened is like um, when we decided to do the, the giant piece, mm -hmm. like the, the big car, um, I also wanted to uh, experiment something, to try to work on a different uh, kind of uh, uh, material. Yes. And uh, because I think my work is kind of uh, dirty, uh -huh. And it and it talk about um, dirty graffiti, primitive graffiti, mm -hmm. and something that is actually super far from what street art can represent today, which is more like uh, more figurative or talking about more political stuff, but really straight with mm -hmm. one message. And you don't need to know maybe the history; just you're gonna see like a girl with a bomb, so it goes straight to the message. And I think uh, my work needs more um, history and more knowledge about what is graffiti, about the letters, about the texture, about accumulation and what, what, what it's talking about. Uh, so that's why I wanted also not only to work with this ID, but also to work on something that is not um, like from the art world, like a canvas and a, and a stretch on a frame. So I was thinking that drywall and something that can come from an abandoned place or like a factory was good to experiment but I never did that before and I knew it was a super tricky um, it's a difficult medium to work with it's a super right? difficult medium to work with so I was thinking that the Jardin Rouge is probably the, the, the place to try to, to work what I understand like. about Jardin Rouge is that one of the core values is encouraging artists to experiment with um, materials or, or techniques that you don't typically use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I think what we've seen by touring here in the last day or so is a number of artists are challenged to go beyond their comfort True. zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, um, and that takes a little while. It, it can't happen in one week. Absolutely not. So um, when you first came for the longer period, not yeah. the first time, yeah. Um, what was that experience like for you? How did you decide upon uh, a different technique? It's, I think the, the good thing is you don't have the pressure or you don't have the environment that you usually have when you are in your own studio, mm -hmm. in your own city, and surrounded by people you know, and people know your work, and people are expecting something from you. So you can be more free, I think. And then you'll be, okay, let's try. And even if it doesn't work, even if it's a fail, okay, yeah. it's okay. It is it's okay. It's part okay. of the game and it's a huge space and you, maybe you don't have to think about all the materials and stuff because it's also easy to get here because like the structure is like so so well managed that if you need something, something's going to come to you. So right. you, don't, you think totally differently. It's like a, a, a deluxe studio. Yes. And in a way, sometimes it's good to be uh, with a... Um, how you say that, like a, a lack of material or something is missing and you're going to find something out of that and at the opposite, when you are, to be honest, I didn't thought it could be, it could happen to me, but when you are like in a, a luxury studio, yes. it can also help because you don't have your mind, um, can, your mind cannot be stopped by, oh, I wanted to do that, but I can't because the frame gonna cost too much, or this material is really hard to find, okay. or I need uh, six or seven people to help me to to uh, to move this car from this room to the other room. So it's like everything is kind of possible. Yes. So that can really open your mind.